I am Jeremiah Ajuda Dusu, the author of Jad's Business and Financial Accounting. Okay. Let's continue. Of course, you know, we are still on group um, uh, balance sheet, okay? So we are, we are making progress, right? So let's take today's class. So we're still doing. Okay, so today we're looking at the uh, hmm? so um, we are trying to look at uh, uh, a scenario where a company has uh, significant influence but not control. In the last class. Uh, not no last class, you know, over, the, over, over, over this um, series, I had taken a class where I was able to explain significant influence and control. Okay? I've explained this in a previous class. I, I said significant influence is the power of, you know, a particular company or a particular investor, you know, to uh, participate in the activities, the policies, operating policy, financial policies of another company. So we can say A limited mm, and B limited. So if it is significant influence, it means that A limited has the power to participate in the world operating policies of what B limited that is significant what influence now if it is controlled it means that what A limited has the power to influence the activities of B of course operating and what uh, financial policies okay to derive what gain or benefit you get now that's control so if A has human influence, it's participating in operating court policies. But if it is controlled, he is able to what influence it to his what benefit to the right gain. Okay. So I was just able to explain that here we have twenty percent, okay, and above, right? But it must be less than what fifty percent. Then here. It's anything above what 50 what percent that's control. Okay, now an associate is what uh, that company in which the investment, okay, in that what company, you know, it's a minimum of what 20 percent, but less than what 50 percent. So where a company has significant influence in another company, okay, with what? A shareholding structure between 20% and above, but less than 50%, you call that company and what? Associate. So if A Limited has 20% in B Limited, this guy here is what an associate. If A Limited has 30% in B Limited, B Limited is what an, an associate. Okay? So we can simply say what um, an associate, let's say A, right? Is what? Anything that is what? Greater than what? 20% AB, right? But what? Less than what? 
50 what percent. So an associate is anything greater than 20 percent, but less than what 50 percent. Do you understand? So that is what we call an associate. Now, in dealing with an associate, which of course is an investment, you must understand two things. Um, you know, holding the investment. For what long term purpose or holding the investment for short term what purpose or we call resale or disposal. So you can hold an investment and associate for long term purpose. That is, you're holding it for a, for a long period of time, or you can hold it, you know, for short term, which is for what resale or what. Disposal. Hmm? Now, if you are holding it for long term, hmm? accounting for it takes what you call equity method. Now, this equity method, uh, it's saying that when you acquire it as an associate, or when you acquire it as an associate, you record it at cost at first. Now, after the acquisition, any undistributed what income after acquisition will what increase the cost of the what investment. Why any loss after acquisition will decrease the cost of investment? That's equity method. Of course, we're looking, we're looking at IS what twenty eight here. Hmm? IES what 28. This is IES 28. Then um, here yeah, we're looking at IFRS 3. That's control. Okay. So I was saying that equity method is saying you at, at acquisition you hold that investment at cost. Then after acquisition, any undistributed profit, as any profit made that is not distributed forms part of the what? Cost of the investment. So if at acquisition, the cost of the investment in the association, let's say is what? 20 billion naira. Okay? That's the cost. So at acquisition, we report it as what? As cost, right? Now after acquisition, if the associate makes a profit of, let's say, uh, 10 million naira, Let's even, okay, let's even say 10 billion. Okay? Associate makes a profit of 10 billion. Okay? After acquisition. So it means that what? The cost of this investment in associate will increase by the what? The investor's share in the profit that is not distributed. So let's assume that it is 20%. It means that at acquisition is 20 billion. But after acquisition, there's a profit of what? 10 billion naira that is not distributed. Then we say 20% of 10 billion. You see, I think that's two billion naira. So that two billion will increase the cost of what? The investment in the associate. So at consolidation, investment in what? Associate will be what? 20 billion plus what? Two billion. So it simply means that we're raising the journal here. So that means you're debiting what? Investment in what? Associate, or let's say cost of what? Investment. Okay, associate with what? Two billion. And then we are crediting what? Profit and what? Loss with what? Two billion. Okay, so don't forget, we are looking at the profit after acquisition. So that means what you're going to be looking at is post acquisition profit. Post acquisition profit is what you're going to use to increase the cost of the what? Of the investment. But there's a loss as well, then it will reduce. So there's a loss. If this was a loss, then that means it will reduce this guy here by 2 billion. So it will be 2 billion, sorry, 20 billion minus what? 2 billion. Okay? So that means you're going to be reporting 18 billion, technically. So of course, if it's a loss, huh, you know that it will reduce the what? To reduce the cost of investment, right? So that would be Credit what cost of investment with two billion 
the debit profit and what loss which was two billion right so this is for loss but then you must also understand that where the loss is higher than the cost of investment then the what investment in associates will be what to be new to be what new okay so this is the what equity method of course there could be dividend when dividend is declared as well okay there are two uh, instances it's either you know it is paid or you know of course it is accrued if it is paid that means you're receiving it so at, you know at um, consolidation you have to be sure of the entry if not you take the appropriate step right so of course if you're receiving it that will be debit towards bank with let's say dividend is um, let's say fifty thousand so dividend will be debit bank for fifty thousand credit profit and what loss to fifty k right but of course if it is an accrual that will be what debit accrued what dividend from what associate fifty k credit profit and what loss fifty k don't forget all these incomes in form of unrecruited profit and dividend you know are happening after what acquisition so in accounting for associate we are concerned more about post acquisition what profit or post acquisition results okay so that is for what um the equity method of course i said we should what, check out is 28 regarding that now if you're holding it you know for short term or for resale or for disposal of course it means that you would have to use what they call the cost method or some people call it or some suggestion that they call it fair value method so what he's saying is that you know at first you would have to recognize it at cost then as long as you're holding it you know for a short period of time or for disposal within that period of holding it you report it at cost then only account for what any interest end in or any distributed profit to the extent to which you have received it so if you have not received it you do not account for it so if you have undistributed profit you're not expected to account for that part okay as what as an income but if it is distributed and then you received it then that is accounted for so as long so you you report the what the uh, investment as cost all through the world period but also account for any uh, profit to the extent to which you have received it as an income of course uh, let's say dividend for instance so if dividend is paid you receive it that will be debiting you know bank and crediting PL. but dividend is not paid you should not you cannot what um, participate in the what undistributed profit standard between you know the cost method and the equity method so for this now we should be looking at is 39 or i think ifrs 5 so for you know short term disposal or you know investment help for resale you know we are looking at um, is 39 ifrs 5 okay so it starts simply take your time go through but what i've said simply is that an associate okay it's an investment to the holding company but the holding company is only having 20 percent or less than 50 percent and i said in accounting for what for an associate either is the equity method or the cost method the equity method is saying that when you acquire the word associate you report it at cost then after acquisition any undistributed profit increases the what the investment any loss decreases it but if the loss is more than the investment you record it at new i said check is what 28 but if you're using the cost method which is when you're holding it for resale or for disposal for a short time period you report that investment at cost throughout that period and then you account for what any interest end on investment or income on investment to the extent to which you have received it so if you do not have dividend from the what from the associate company then there's no need accounting for undistributed profit 
you see, area between the cost method and the equity method. So, you know, you can look at all those um, standards I've talked about, you know, to understand, you know, uh, the references. So, if you have questions, you can reach me on the number that's been able to reply with the right answers. So, let's quickly take a question uh, to understand what we're talking about here. Okay, let's quickly take uh, this question so we understand what we're talking about here. So we have uh, the phone represent the balance sheet of Kings Limited, Queens Limited, and Pawns Limited at the first time 18. We have Kings, Queens, and Pawns. We have land and building, furniture, debtors, invested in Queens, invested in Pawns. Then it goes like that. Then I think when the Kings Limited acquire 90% shares in Queens Limited on the first time 16, when the reserve was what? 100,000. Uh, then Kings Limited acquire 30% shares in Pawns Limited. On the matter and seventeen, when reserve was what fifty thousand. Of course, we have a subsidiary, and then we also have an associate. So, King Limited intend to hold investment in Pond as long term. Okay, so prepare consolidation schedule and consider the of financial world position. Okay, of course, here um, we have kings, we have queens, and we have pawns. Okay, so kings has a what control in queens kings has significant what influence in what in pawns okay so this guy here is 90 percent this guy here is 30 percent so queens is a subsidiary pawns is what an associate and don't forget this is direct right kings has it directly in uh in pawn. but then don't forget as an associate you can have it in other forms as well you can have an associate indirectly okay you can have it you know in form of what fellow of course indirectly here means that let's say kings has 90 percent okay in queens right now if queen is having let's say uh 40 percent okay in what in pawns of course you know that Directly, kings have ninety percent in queens, ninety percent, right? But queens have what forty percent in pawns. So indirectly, kings will be having what ninety percent of what this in what pawns, right? So kings in pawns will be ninety percent of forty. What do you have? <clears throat> Zero point nine times forty. So that means indirectly, kings in pawns is what. 36 percent so you can see that <clears throat> you can have associate indirectly the question of something here is directly or indirectly you can have as you can also have associate in form of what john already taught us you know what joint a uh, jointly owned subsidiary means right so that means because this one is indirect so when you're looking at joint you know kings here has 90 percent in what in queens right now queens has let's say uh 17 percent in pawns now kings now has let's say 15 percent in pawns okay now directly directly kings in pawns is 15 percent indirectly it will be 90% of 17. What do you have? Fifteen point three. Indirectly, kings in pawns will be fifteen point three percent. When you add, you're having what? Thirty point three. So you can see that there's a jointly owned associate. You see? So you can have it in that you can have it in joint. You can have it as fellow. You know, let's say kings, of course, in queen in pawns, let's say in knight. Okay, you can have, let's say, 21% here, you can have 25%, you can have 30%, because that they are all fellow associates, right? So you can have associate in just the way you have subsidiaries, and then the principles remain the same. Okay, so I just have to quickly put that, but in the question here, we are having direct subsidiary and direct what? associates. So, 
let's proceed so let's go we have consolidated what schedule so this is cost of control right kings in what queens 90 percent so we have minority interest 10 percent so we have consolidated profit and what loss right So what's the first one? We have what? Queens. Share capital is what? What's Queens there? Queens share capital is 1 million, so that's 1,000, right? 90% is what? 10% is 100, right? So what's the reserve? The reserve for Queens. Is three hundred thousand, but at consolidation, at acquisition rather, we have hundred. So this is Queen's reserve. This is three hundred. So pre post pre here hundred post to what two hundred, right? King acquired nine percent shares in Queen with the when Israel was what hundred. So. What you have is this will be times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9. This will be times what? 0 0.1. So 0 0.9 times 100. So that should be 90, right? So 0 0.9 times 200 should be around 180. Let's check. One eighty. So zero point one times this should be. Uh, what do you have? Is it thirty? So what do you have? Ninety plus thirty plus one eighty. Three hundred. So we have our three hundred here, right? So let's go. This is nine ninety. This is one thirty. Net asset acquired, right? Now, what is the cost of what investment in coins? Cost of investment in coins here is two four ten. So we have two four one zero. Okay. So what are our goodwill? 990 minus 2410 because that's the debit balance good way. 1420. So this is a debit balance good way. Right? So let's go. Minority interest. We have 130. Now King's Reserve. Of course. What am I seeing here? There is a reserve on pawn. So pawn's reserve is how much? 400. Now at acquisition, there is what? 50. So we have pre 50, then post will be what 350 remember as an associate we are concerned about the post acquisition result right and that will be 30 percent Abi? yeah that is what they acquire that will be times what zero point three so what's the debt what's the entry we're going to say debit what um cost of what investment credit was reserve so What's the end of three fifty? One o five. So this one o five. This is one o five. So let's go. King's reserve. So 
we say, Balan got what? What's the reserve of king? 2650. We're crediting it here with what? Income from associate, right? So we have uh, cost of investment. How much? 105. There's a dividend as well. The dividend I can see here is a dividend of 150 proposed and has not been accounted for by the holding company. So let's account for it. So what do we have? Pons dividend. Okay. That dividend is even for 280, right? We have four. What's the dividend? Let's be sure. 150. So what is the share? Now we can 0.3. So 150 times 0.3. Forty-five. That's forty-five. So we're going to say debit what accrued dividend from what associate forty-five credit profit and which is the reserve forty-five. So we're going to say accrued what dividend associate. What that? 45. So let's go. We have a new reserve here. Balance carry on. 2650. 2650 plus 105 plus 45. 2800. So we have 2800. There's a new reserve here. Balance brought forward. So what's the next one? We have investment in associate, right? That's in pawns. So balance brought forward. What's the investment in pawn? One thousand one hundred. There is what? Of course, um, on their profit. So we see reserve 105. So what do we have? 5021. So we have carry down 1205. 1205. So there's a new balance. 1205. So what's the next one? We have accrued. Dividend from real associates. Right? So now it has to be reserved. How much? 45. So that's the debit balance. So with this, we can go ahead to prepare uh, the consolidated financial statement. What we've just done here is to account for, you know. A subsidiary and an associate. So this is the showing that of the associate, and then these are the adjustments in terms of the reserve. So let's go now. So let's go. King's reserve. What's the new balance? 2800. So King has moved to what? 2800 plus 180. Two nine eighty. So this is completely profit and what loss. Okay. So what do we have now? We say kings and its what subsidiaries. So we say consolidated statement. Of financial position as at the first December two thousand and one eighteen. So we have 
have this here. These are the notes. We have assets. So what do we have? We have uh, non orange. Let's call it note one. So let's say note one. So what are the now I have uh, land and building. <clears throat> that will be for what? Kings and Queens. Kings and Queens is 550. So that will be 1,010, right? Let's check. Yeah. So we have furniture and fittings. Kings and queens, 300, 260. So what do you have? This will be 560. So add up. 10 plus 560, 1570. <coughs> So we have 1570. So what we have now? Investment in associates. Where is it? This is it. We have 1205. Now let's go. Current asset now. So of course. If you don't want to use ledger to you know show the investment in bonds, you can use notes to show it as well. Hmm? So what are the current assets that we have there? We have the uh, debtors. What's the debtors you see there? Two ninety plus one eighty. What do we have? Two ninety plus one eighty. Four seventy. What's the next one? Bank five fifty three fifty. What do we have? Nine hundred. And don't forget, there is what? Accrued dividends from what? Associate. You know, I've already explained accrued, accrued as to you. It's an income to the holding company. It has been earned, but it has not been received. So technically, the associate is owing the holding company. So let's say accrued dividends, okay? From what? Associates. So what do we have there? That will be 45. So let's add 470. 470 plus 900 plus 45, 1415. Of course, some suggestions we want to show the accrual as, as a separate line, just like you will show embedded and associate. Okay, so it means that you take it out of it and make it a separate item. So we have 1415. So let's add it. 1570, 1570 plus 1205 plus then goodwill. Okay, goodwill, goodwill. We have a goodwill, of course, a very balanced goodwill. 1420. So let's add. That's 4190 plus 1420. 5610. So we have our liabilities here. What do we have? Reserves. 
what I reserve two nine eighty. What's the share capital? Share capital of King is two five hundred. Then we have minority interests. What do we have? One thirty. So let's add up two nine eighty. Plus two five hundred plus one thirty five system five system. So this is your total liabilities. This is your total assets. Okay. So what we've done here is to simply, you know. Prepare a consolidated balance sheet or financial statement with an associate. Okay? So take your time, go through it. If you have questions, you can reach my number at this play. I'll get to reply with the right answers. See you next. And don't forget, you can support us by paying the account number at this play. Okay? Or reach us if there's any way you feel you can support us. We'll let you know how you can be of your trust. Thank you. See you next class.